David Dobrik made some noise this past week on several occasions, and while he was doing that, the vlog squad hopped around each other's podcasts, giving updates on their lives, and things are getting messy, so let's get into everything. In regards to David, some were wondering if he was actually going to try and make his way back to YouTube this week because the other day, this notification popped up for people showing that David had uploaded a video to his second channel. Yeah, David uploading a video, it's definitely not a sentence I thought I was going to be saying anytime soon or ever again. The video was titled Surprising My Friends With Celebrities, but by the time a lot of people hit the video, it was already private. People who did get to see it said that the video was just a compilation of all the times that he had surprised his friends with celebrities in videos of his, and it wasn't anything new. But the fact that this was even something that was uploaded was interesting, and definitely sparked some thoughts wondering if David would actually ever consider returning back to the internet at some point. I honestly thought that if he was going to return, it was going to be when he launched his pizza shop because he needed more promo for it, but he never posted anything on there, which was kind of shocking. So for him to just randomly maybe pop back up one day, I, I just, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it. He's regularly posting everywhere else online, but YouTube is just the one thing that he's been sure to stay away from, but maybe it will change soon? I don't know, you guys. I guess we'll just have to see, but his friends sure are aware of the fact that his hype isn't what it used to be. And maybe that's why he wants to revive some content to bring some of that attention back or something. I mean, his friends definitely realize that his popularity isn't the same since Joe and Matt were recently talking about Playboy in a random podcast episode and if they've ever been to the mansion. And this is what they had to say. No, I never went to the Playboy house. Me, me neither. And it sucks. I always thought that we could do it. We should have done it way early on when we first David was popular. Or oh. <laughs> when David was like popping, popping, popping. I mean, he's not wrong. And I'm actually surprised that was never a video that David did because it seems like something he would have done. Surprising my friends at the Playboy Mansion or something. Like, I just feel like that's something that he would have done, but it didn't happen. Anyway, there's some other stuff going on within the vlog squad. A little while ago, I had talked about how Jonah was getting called out on Jason's podcast because Jason's assistant, Jess, was organizing Jason's bachelor party. And he had mentioned on the podcast that the hotel planner that they were working with had exposed the fact that Jonah tried to name drop David in order to get his room upgraded. Jonah had also been going behind my back when I was planning the weekend trying to get himself a better room and he was like name dropping David being like I'm friends with David Dobrik like is there a better is there a better room for for me and me and David to have like a better weekend right. and and this woman's like please tell this man to stop messaging me <laughs> and in the recent episode Jonah was there this time and he had brought up the fact that people in the friend group seem to have something against him and not liking inviting him places and when Jess brings up the bachelor party he's like no People called me out for using David's name and he was trying to defend himself against the whole story that was told the last time. I'm the one who sticks up for you all the time when everybody talks. Why does it happen, by the way? Why do so many of our friends talk about people don't under People don't understand that. You were an hour late today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, you yelled at me for not booking you your own suite in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, you guys don't put that on me because I have mother commenting on my Instagram shit going like, oh, you use David's. I didn't use no one's name, by the way, to book my own suite. And in the end, I still got my four bedroom suite. So you went I to a different say, hotel. I a, but I, did, I, I was only I was only annoyed because you're like, don't go off and do your own thing. I'm like, dude, I'm working with a completely different. I'm getting mines from Palms. Like, I'll meet you guys where you guys are at. That's not what you said. You were talking to our hotel and they emailed me saying. I did talk to Resort World at okay, first and then go. Palms hooked me up with a better Okay, room. there. Someone... What a messy trip. Seriously. One that cost Jason big time, though, as he said he should have just gotten married in Vegas during that trip with the way that it was so expensive. And the wedding is also costing him money as well. And it doesn't help that he said he was recently scammed by somebody who was helping him look at venues and stuff. So he's down a lot. And with all the wedding mess and expensive trips, it seems to have really taken a toll on him because he announced in this episode that his assistant Jess would be leaving as he cannot afford her anymore. Big news is that Jess is leaving me. That is what's happening. Did you hear it, Jonah? Have you heard through the grapevine yet? Jess is leaving? She's leaving, yes. I can no longer afford Jess. 
fuck yeah. Yeah. So Was that oh. yeah that I'm leaving? <laughs> she looks like she's about to cry. Are you sure you want to cheer yeah. that on? No, I'm good. But aren't you sad I'm leaving? I, I'm acting like I'm leaving, like I'm moving country. I'm literally going to yeah. be around like every day. Uh, why are you leaving? You know, say fi- it, finances. Say I just, just can't afford Jess anymore. It's just okay, too yeah. much. I, I, mean, I, I pay listen. Ferris. I pay Jess. Jess, what are you going to do? Um, I don't know. I'm actually kind of excited because yeah. I haven't been... <laughs> Well, no, I, no, yeah. I, I, I yeah. am though. Like, no, she should be. Let's go break like, up. I, it's weird. Like when Jason told me, like obviously it's sad, but like, um, I just feel like it's like time, anyways. Yeah. I feel like it was like I've worked for you for now for like over two, two years. years, and I'm 28. She does seem in good spirits about it though, saying that she had this idea for a clothing store before she even worked for Jason, and it kind of got put on the back burner when they started working together. And now it's maybe her time to focus on that. And she also started streaming recently. So it seems like she's ready for this next chapter, even if it kind of sucks why the push to work on her own kind of happened. She said she didn't really want to work for any of the other vlog squad members anyway. So she's just going to do her own thing now. Meanwhile, Natalie is involved in quite literally every business ever, it seems. She sat down with Joe on his podcast to talk about everything that she's got going on. And it's a lot of stuff. She's like the polar opposite of everybody else. Like she has her hands in everything. She's got a team. She's got a clothing brand. She's on David's team. She's part owner of the pizza restaurant that they have that is somehow still a thing. Most of the reviews though for that pizza place I've heard about have said that it's kind of inconsistent. Like sometimes the quality is there and it's hot and it's fresh and it's good. And sometimes it's just not. But it sounds like they're trying to get things kind of figured out with the way that they just hired somebody new to help keep things organized and hopefully help them expand. We are just trying to get into like developing additional locations and like figuring out where we want to do that. But yeah, we want to like keep the vibe the same. Like it should have the same feel, the same aesthetic, the same, you know, everything. I mean, we're still trying to perfect like just the first location. And we just actually hired a brand new COO that's taking over all of like the operations of the company, which is huge. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's been awesome. And he's like, he's been in there every day just at the restaurant these first like two weeks. Um, He's like fresh. We just hired him two weeks ago. He's like changed the whole process and the flow. He's like trying to come up with an actual system. So every employee makes the pizza the same exact way. Cause some people are like, you know, they have their own personal preferences and they will make the pizza the way they think tastes best, but it's not necessarily the way that we want it to be presented, you know? And so now he has like an exact flow and exact, exact system and then now we then we can replicate that into like additional restaurants and things natalie says the dream for dobricks is to have it be like mcdonald's and have thousands of dobricks locations so we'll see if they get something good going with this first one enough to have a second one even but only time will tell it kind of sounds like it's been a little messy of a run since they're opening like they're still trying to figure things out and get it together and obviously they're like hiring help now to try and get them a little bit more organized Organized, but if they want to open up a thousand more and be a McDonald's, they definitely have to get it together. But going back to David for a second, this weekend, he did find himself in some headlines, I will say, but not for anything too controversial like he usually is. Although people were not happy when they read this, but Pop Crave posted saying, Sabrina Carpenter partied with David Dobrik into the early hours of the morning following her set at Lollapalooza, according to page six. Now it wasn't what it sounds like when you actually read the article, it is much more downplayed, but for a second, people were replying to this like, get away from her which is kind of funny, but in the article they wrote, Sabrina Carpenter partied into the early hours of the morning with YouTuber David Dobrik following her set at Lollapalooza. An insider tells Page Six exclusively, the pair hit up Tao Chicago Friday night where producer Metro Boomin was performing. Sabrina and David shared a booth with a few other friends towards the side of the stage, the eyewitnesses tell us. They were smiling and laughing while sitting next to each other and chatting before Metro Boomin came on. The source adds, noting the duo snapped a couple of selfies with fans in the VIP area. So it definitely just sounded more like a friend hangout rather than just like that opening sentence of like they partied together to the early hours of the morning, making it sound like it was just the two of them or something. But they were with a bunch of people and they were watching Metro Boomin. So it sounds pretty normal. 
And once this was kind of going around where people didn't really read the whole article and they were just going based off of like that one little sentence, Sabrina had posted on Instagram with the caption, sorry, I don't date Lollapaloozas. And everyone was feeling like this was her way of shutting down the rumors. Others were saying it was just in reference to her performance at the festival in which she had said this on stage. So it was probably that, but everyone thought it was shade towards David Dobrik. Either way, people were feeling relieved as there wasn't anything further written about these two hanging out romantically. But that's pretty much what has been said about and by the vlog squad this past week. It's certainly been an interesting one, that's for sure. But let me know what you guys think about everything in the comments. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.